Hi, good morning, um, <clears throat> and welcome to you know the second session for the unit that we are covering international healthcare policy. Now, <clears throat> in the second learning outcome, what we are looking at doing is we're looking at basically understanding you know the social and cultural issues in the context of health and social care. So here, the basic idea is what we want to understand that in the context of uh, when we study health and social care, how does the culture and our beliefs actually uh, you know affect the way we receive treatment and obviously uh, our whole approach when we look at to the healthcare system so what we're going to do is go through a few slides to understand um, you know first uh, that what is culture and what are different cultural beliefs that we get to see when we look at this particular topic so we'll look at you know um, this from a perspective of few different societies and obviously try and see how uh, you know people within different societies actually perceive um, you know healthcare and obviously the treatment that they receive because of healthcare issues in the second part what we're going to look at is we're going to try and understand um, you know with regards to the task is what impact does culture have when we receive uh, you know health and social care or when we look at a particular system uh, in terms of the nhs for example and how does uh, the you know impact of cultural uh, beliefs uh, different types of people different types of backgrounds when they receive uh, you know care within the nhs or uh, elsewhere in any of the uh, you know different types of uh, facilities that we look at uh, getting health care we will understand what is the impact the culture has We'll also relate that to the attitudes in terms of the people's attitude, personal attitude when you try and receive healthcare and you know look at uh, understanding it from a point of view of a few examples. We'll look at the definition of attitude, how is it related to health and social care. And lastly, what we will look at is we'll try and evaluate what we've studied today in terms of you know uh, the overall impact of culture, our beliefs. Uh, and how does it structure the system and affects the system in terms of, you know, um, one from, uh, you know, the side of people who are actually administrating uh, care or giving care to the patients and the other side being the patients receiving the care. So what we look at is um, kind of, um, you know, uh, relate both the beliefs, the impact of culture and the attitude of people receiving health care to understand uh, you know how this uh, whole thing works within the context of uh, you know a particular system and for example the nhs so let me start off with um, um, you know these slides just to um, go through some of the theoretical concepts first and the idea here would be to you know understand a few points um, generally uh, speaking to uh, relate it into the context of you know understanding what is culture and what are cultural beliefs so when we look at you know um, the context of culture uh, one of the key things that we understand is that uh, you know um, all cultures have uh, you know um, a system and this system essentially has some beliefs and obviously these beliefs then kind of you know affect or um, uh, let's put it this way, they basically form a process through which we receive care. Now, culture obviously is seen as one of the important determinating factors, you know, when we look at how do we receive health and social care. So it leads to the rise of preferences and practices. Now, this can be looked at from a point in terms of how patients typically perceive, um, you know, uh, the treatment or the type of treatment that they're receiving. And to a certain extent, this actually depends on the type of education that they've had and in terms of what their belief has been, what their background has been and where they come from in terms of demographics and, you know, uh, in terms of, um, uh, you know, background. So sometimes you get to see that um, um, a case in point here would be that if you've had, say, for example, um, a problem and you're um, then referred by your GP or, for example, your local surgery to go into the hospital to receive a care or maybe get some sort of an operative procedure done. To a certain extent, some of these things are, you know, influenced by the cultural background, the beliefs that we have, the background we come from, and, you know, obviously patients' willingness to be able to cooperate to receive that treatment. Now, what we do get to see if we understand, if we try and understand these beliefs from a different societal point of view, when we look at Western industrialized uh, nations, uh, say, for example, the UK, we see that, uh, you know, our um, perception of 
um, you know, diseases is that it's a, it's a natural phenomenon which basically, uh, you know, occurs because of certain set of events which happen. And in order to, uh, you know, get well or get back onto our feet, what we need to be able to do is basically get medical treatment, which will help us, um, you know, combat uh, the, the problem that we are facing. And this is done in conjunction with the use of technology, you know, the medicines and obviously uh, diagnosis, which is done through the initial set of, uh, you know, um, a process that you go through wherein then at some stage you are given appropriate medicine or treatment and there is use of technology in you know understanding how this is uh, going to be then um, you know uh, treated now if we look at other other cultures culture plays definitely an important issue in terms of patient compliance so when i say patient compliance sometimes you get to see that some patients when they have to undergo treatment they need to look at uh, you know getting advice or maybe getting some sort of counseling uh, because their beliefs or their uh, you know uh, background does not permit them to be um, you know receiving that treatment so let's look at some of the other um, you know examples in terms of how other societies kind of perceive uh, you know the uh, impact of culture on their healthcare beliefs. So when we look at, you know, illness or, you know, you, you look at some sort of a problem that you've had, and this in some societies is a result of what they call supernatural phenomena. That means superstitions. So sometimes when you look at some societies, they will primarily look at the issue of illness from a point of view of a supernatural phenomenon, which means that they will primarily pray or, you know, look at uh, those kind of spiritual interventions which will then obviously according to them do away with these unnatural forces and the person would get cured now one of the studies which was apparently carried out in the asian context um, you know primarily in cambodia and this was published in one of the american journals in 2015 um, related to culture and the you know uh, the effects of our health uh, you know culture on the health belie health beliefs uh, in terms of society it basically came out with that you know um, in the, in the in that particular society uh, which which has very minimal formal education um, adults there make a considerable effort to comply with therapy if they are diagnosed with any problem for example or any illness then adults there would consider make considerable efforts to be able to comply with the treatment that they are being administered and this lies to a certain extent in terms of taking medicines to make sure that they uh, you know are able to recover uh, you know from uh, from that now, when we look at extending this to, you know, um, a larger section of the society, what we do sometimes see is that, sorry about that, what we do sometimes see is that, um, you know, from this context, um, you know, sometimes the extended family of the patient has a significant influence. Sometimes you see that the oldest, oldest members in the family would also have a significant influence in terms of making a decision or being a spokesperson if, uh, if they feel that somebody has had a bit of a problem or an issue, healthcare issue in their family. Now, this sometimes can also be related to the interest and honor of a family when we look at certain Asian cultures and they prohibit uh, the use of treatments uh, because they see it as a, uh, you know, part of supernatural phenomena or you know in some Asian cultures what they say is uh, it is to do with more of maintaining harmony with the nature and that's why there's this very strong uh, you know emphasis on avoiding conflicts or you know direct confrontation in terms of taking medical treatments now this um, if you look at extending it to other societies we will see sometimes you see Chinese patients uh, because of the individual behavior uh, you know and and the way they uh, you know the background they come from say in terms of family ties sometimes what they see is that uh, mental illness or any such behavior you know could be seen as lack of control which may produce shame and guilt you know on the family so certain problems which are related to for example the aging population in china when you look at dementia and some of the other problems families shy away from taking uh, you know um, medical help or going into the healthcare professional uh, you know, uh, going into some sort of taking help uh, is is a factor which is related to their cultural beliefs that it shows that you are not able to exercise enough control, um, you know, enough self control, and this is seen as a shame of, uh, you know, as a cause of shame and guilt within the families. So as a result, Chinese patient may be reluctant to take, uh, you know, medicine or you know treatment, and they what they will tend to do is basically look at the uh, the process of, you know. Um, going through some therapy or 
uh, you know, local medicine, uh, which has been, you know, which has been passed on by generations to try and see if that treatment works. Now, in some cases, if you look at uh, cultures from India and Pakistan or East, Southeast Asia, they are also cultures which are, uh, you know, they believe in the supernatural phenomenon, obviously superstitions, and they're reluctant to accept diagnosis sometimes of severe emotional illnesses or, you know, mental retardation. And this is primarily, again, uh, due to the fact that this is related to cultural beliefs. Now, we can go through some of the other examples, but the, here the idea would be to try and understand how, uh, you know, in particular, uh, when we look at, you know, the culture, um, of a particular society actually has an impact on the type of treatment or the health care that they receive. And similarly, when we look at, you know, Far East Asian uh, or cultures, you look at Vietnamese culture in particular, they have a particular mystical belief which explains physical and mental illnesses. And as a result, what they tend to do is they basically uh, believe that the body is governed by hot and cold poles. And they look at, you know, treating some of these um, uh, illnesses, uh, not through the Western style, uh, you know, of, uh, of uh, you know, looking at treatment, but they look at some sort of uh, interventions through, you know, their own created medicines or drugs, which is primarily, you know, uh, 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 nature related. If you look at, you know, some of the uh, beliefs within the Russian uh, side of things, uh, when you look at that as a country, here the patients find it difficult to question a physician. They normally look at discussing, you know, medical concerns or issues directly with, the, you know, their uh, concerned person could be GP, pharmacy, nurses. And here the patients actually expect a paternalistic approach. That means patients look up to the doctors and look up to the medical staff, the healthcare professionals to be able to provide competent healthcare, which will help them recover as soon as possible. So the reliance on physical physician expertise, uh, you know, uh, is, is uh, to a certain extent um, you know, built into their uh, cultural beliefs. Now, having understood some idea and getting some idea in terms of, you know, what types of cultural beliefs we get to see when we look at different societies, what we want to be able to do now is to try and assess the impact of culture on healthcare. So let's look at a few slides to understand this particular task and, uh, you know, how uh, this can be related to uh, having an impact, uh, you know, on society. The first part we looked at, uh, impact of culture. Now we're looking at an impact of society. So when you look at an example here, many African uh, Americans, uh, you know, they participate uh, in, in culture that centers on the importance of family and church. So sometimes you get to see very close-knit communities which, uh, which are closely bound and there, uh, you know, they have very strong values, uh, you know, which are placed on the importance of family and obviously looking at, uh, you know, the um, uh, church. Now, in this case, what we do get to see is that sometimes they have extended kinships or bonds with their uncles and aunts and individuals, and you know they don't tend to be, um, uh, you know, kind of biologically related, but they still place a very uh, strong emphasis, you know, on the family system. Now, here, normally, what we will see is that from a societal point of view, a key family member is always consulted on important healthcare decisions. So when we look at some societies like the Native Americans, we look at you know the Jewish uh, you know society. When we look at, they will basically have a key member in the family which will always be consulted for important healthcare related decisions. And sometimes we do get to see this having a bit of a rub off on you know the different ethnic groups when we look at within uh, the United Kingdom and some of these ethnic groups or ethnic minorities have their own perspective and values on how the healthcare system should work and in some cases what they have is their own they have their own beliefs and because they have their own beliefs they to a certain extent have their own practices because of the background they come from or if they have immigrated from outside to the UK and what we do get to see that because of the culture the background and uh, you know their uh, previous um, uh, you know let's put it this way demographics their healthcare practices, practices tend to differ from those which are generally seen within the UK healthcare system. Now here, sometimes you will see that there is a bit of a conflict which tends to happen because they have a different expectation from a healthcare professional or maybe a nurse or a GP or a pharmacist, whichever you see. And in those cases, what they tend to do is they basically have then expectations which sometimes, you know, are 
uh, creating barriers, let's put it this way, uh, because of the differences. And these differences could be because of language, education, background, uh, their ability to be able to understand the uh, you know, medical problem or uh, the issue. And this then tends to have an overall impact on you know, how they receive healthcare uh, within the society. Now, cultural differences can also be looking at, you know, affecting patients' attitude. And let's look at understanding this from a few, uh, you know, slides from a theoretical point of view is because what we want to understand is how does a personal uh, person's attitude affect the ability to be, uh, you know, administered health and social care. So, for example, if you're in need for uh, medical supervision, how does your attitude actually affect the, uh, you know, the uh, the treatment that you receive? So here, what we are talking about is essentially the ability to be able to understand and manage and cope with the illness that uh, that you have been diagnosed with, and then the subsequent medical treatment that the patient actually receives. Now, here, sometimes we do get to see that patients and families uh, they bring certain specific cultural issues, uh, which could be related to both health the, of the individual, the illness, or the symptoms being reported, and in some cases, you know, the uh, the care being administered or delivered. So, in the case of Asian families, if you look at, you know, most of the sexually related problems, you will see that are not discussed. And in this case, that if you have some sort of these problems, then the women generally shy away from discussing these problems, and they are normally discussed either in the presence of a male member or a male, uh, you know, uh, um, let's put it this way, a senior uh, member or a key uh, figure of the family when these problems are discussed because they are seen to be problems which are not openly discussed, uh, you know, from their point of view. So here, the attitudes in terms of, uh, you know, understanding the uh, illness or the reasons why this has happened typically affects, uh, you know, the kind of treatment they receive, um, you know, from a point of view of, um, uh, you know, from a point of view of the which is required to be given. So on this particular table, what I want to basically show is that uh, sometimes you will see that um, um, use of different, um, uh, there's a lot of different uh, questions which need to be asked by the healthcare professional to be able to deal effectively with the varying cultures and the beliefs and also the attitude of the person towards uh, the problem being faced. So some of the questions that uh, you know most health professionals sometimes tend to ask is about things that they are given to understand when they do training and development to understand you know what are the various cultural traditions that they would uh, need to be aware of so for example when we look at our increasing diverse uh, society within the U uk what we do tend to see a lot of uh, you know healthcare professionals working within uh, within the sector are continuously asked to upgrade their skills knowledge and also given training to understand the cultural traditions of the patients that they work with and they are then, uh, you know, um, kind of trained to be able to play, uh, you know, play or have close pay, sorry, have close attention towards pay and have close attention towards, you know, the body language, uh, the, the, the kind of response, the expression or anxiety or, you know, the kind of signals which the, uh, the patient or the family member would actually give uh, when they are being administered, you know, the treatment. In some cases, you know, it is it is expected that you ask open-ended questions to gain more information about their assumptions and, you know, obviously their expectations from receiving the treatment. And sometimes we do get to see that, you know, some of these patients, because of their attitude and beliefs, they need to get consultation uh, uh, even prior to receiving a treatment because sometimes some of these beliefs do hinder with the uh, illness uh, or, you know, the treatment being received for the illness. And in that case, consultation is required uh, to kind of get them comfortable and, you know, uh, really get going or talking to understand why this treatment is being done. So some of these things could be looked at from a point of view of, uh, you know, um, the attitude, uh, you know, we look at um, healthcare and healthcare issues. So if I look at the basic definition now, you know, according to a few uh, studies which have, which have been done, you know, the term attitude is widely used uh, primarily within the healthcare sector because um, when we look at ethnic minorities, we look at diverse cultures and obviously, uh, you know, NHS catering to a different set uh, or diverse set of uh, people when we provide these services, 
they need to understand that what is the general expectation which people have or the opinion they form when they uh, you know speak to different people they see uh, or read a material or they understand you know their in terms of their understanding of issues so when we look at attitude uh, you know it is primarily a mixed reaction which could be positive or negative to a person object or an idea and this attitude can also be lasting because it tends to stay over a period of time so once you form the attitude towards a particular attitude towards a, a system a treatment or uh, if your ideas become you know kind of concretized what it makes it um, you know difficult to kind of change that uh, and it it requires time for that to be changed so some of these things when we look at you know um, the the role of attitude uh, in particular, and the studies related to that in the context of healthcare were actually, you know, done by a psychologist, uh, Daniel Katz, and this was under his functional theory of attitudes, which basically facilitated, uh, you know, social behavior, and he constructed this particular, uh, um, you know, um, study wherein he talked about how the social behavior, uh, you know, influenced the development of attitude towards health and social care and he looked at a few ideas which were things like you know uh, the the importance of values uh, uh, you know and beliefs within a culture how they were uh, defended or you know how important they were and ingrained within that particular culture or society and what was the role in terms of knowledge and information which uh, you know helped them to um, you know uh, understand and administer some of uh, uh, healthcare practices. Now, I have put in a few slides which basically talk about describing you know, this particular um, uh, study and, you know, the utilitarian function which also describes the basic principles of, you know, uh, beneficence and punishment. It's, it's, it's a journal theory which obviously has been picked up from management wherein uh, this particular study by Daniel Katz was very specific to health and social care and the behavior, um, you know, um, the social behavior aspect of it. going further what we look at is we kind of divide some of these things into the three or four that he used to kind of construct this particular study so from that point of view i think it is important for us to understand the concept and how uh, and what role and attitude plays in terms of you know uh, when we look at um, you know the administration or administering and social care, uh, you know, to people within uh, society which have different beliefs, culture, and back. There are other theories which are also there, and uh, one of the key theories that we need to look at is the ABC model, uh, you know, of attitude theories in general. And this basically consists of three components which talked about effect, behavior, and cognition. And here, uh, you know, it is um, it is also trying to understand how the behavior of an individual when divided into three different components, affects or molds the attitude, uh, you know, of the individual receiving, uh, you know, healthcare in general or in general, the attitude of the person with regards to a particular situation or, a, um, you know, uh, basically with regards to a situation. So there are a few models. There's another one, which is Fishbane model, which basically talks about multi-attributes related to health and social care. And then here, uh, the idea is when you do this particular task, when we talk about analyze attitudes to healthcare, I think you will have to make a reference to one of the theories covered in the slides for which I will also give you a handout uh, to detail it out so that you are able to put this in the context of uh, a theoretical um, aspect, but at the same point in time, explain it and relate it to uh, your healthcare uh, context, uh, you know, with regards to the unit that we are studying. Now, looking at very briefly a few points, you know, there is obviously a growing realization that, um, you know, when we look at a lot of people coming into the UK, which are immigrants, and they are being asked to, uh, you know, kind of um, um, become mainstream or adopt, uh, you know, the culture within the UK, what we do get to see is because of the different groups, um, uh, you know, and different diverse cultures, which are now prevalent within the NHS, uh, within the UK, for, to which NHS actually caters, what we do see that is many healthcare professionals, you know, have to be culturally sensitive to provide, uh, you know, appropriate services. And sometimes you will see that 
it becomes very uh, difficult for the people not having the relevant background uh, you know to be able to administer uh, you know the patient care which is required um, you know in order to um, get that uh, you know treatment administered to the particular patient so here there is study which was by nhs and uh, in that particular study which was carried out you know um, the quality care commission in 2015 published a report wherein they spoke about the background in terms of delivering high quality care uh, with uh, keeping in line or keeping in mind the common commitments which need to be made uh, to patients uh, so that we are able to uh, you know kind of be sensitive but also able to incorporate the diverse backgrounds the culture and the beliefs and the attitudes while administrating uh, you know or administering this particular care so the british healthcare system is obviously not alone in experiencing these problems but this is something that we have also seen uh, which other healthcare systems or you know similar systems like in australia canada and the us they also have uh, you know uh, these things which have now been incorporated because of you know uh, global mobility uh, economic migration and obviously a uh, lot of people uh, you know now um going into countries wherein it it is now a multicultural or a diverse setting wherein individuals have uh, you know the the country or the particular geography has individuals from different culture background and you know um with different beliefs and attitude now the this particular study which was done in 2015 particularly about the top you know understanding how attitude can affect uh you know a person receiving the treatment and from that point of view a few set of questions uh, were determined uh, you know primarily which healthcare professionals need to be aware of so that when they when they ask these open ended questions the idea is to do a bit of cultural assessment and some of these questions are on the slides so for example they are uh, you know open ended and they are asked to patients so that you are able to get more information about the patient and how to administer that particular treatment keeping in mind their beliefs uh, you know and to which they come from now by asking the questions sometimes what you are doing is basically getting valuable information about uh, the patient and that would help you effectively or other uh, you know a particular treatment uh, as the case may be now what we look at in the subsequent slide is to try and understand how attitude culture can be all put together into one context and then we understand how this works from national context point now again this is a study would you hand out on and this study uh, you know was basically um, you know conducted by nhs and the curve care committee published uh, by king's college london in 2015 and what i've done is from the study i have kind of extracted out a few relevant pages which i think would be uh, important enough for us to go through to try and understand this particular concept of uh, you know um culture belief and its impact uh, you know on uh, administering care so this particular uh, handout which i'm going to send you is about 13 odd pages but it talks why this study was done how it looks at the inception of culture into uh, you know the nhs uh, national health care service as a system what are the advantages and benefits and then uh, in the second chapter which is implemented to our task to four we talk about you know the culture uh, and how this is using the various bodies like the uh, you know national institute of um, uh, you know research the nhs and in terms how is then been implemented into various trusts and hospitals so that the it is good enough to uh, you know basically deliver and administer care health care related service to patients uh, who are coming across from diverse backgrounds and obviously one of the key things which is uh, kept in mind is patient satisfaction and this is done uh, in regards with uh, you know a study which has also been carried out by ipsis mori and the uh, you know gp british medical association and uh, the academy of medical royal colleges to try and ensure that whatever care is provided to the patient is going to take into account the culture of the organization the culture of compassion and obviously ensuring that the provision of healthcare and its delivery is recognizing the various backgrounds the you know beliefs and uh, you know the instilling the culture of care from a point of view of administering that to the 
patient. So this is where I would probably stop uh, for today and uh, you know send you a copy of this presentation, which is also and also this particular handout that you're getting to see, which basically talks about and does a to give you understand the importance of uh, you know social and cultural uh, uh, aspects. Uh, you know when we 